While writing the script for the previous video, after showing this limit, I wanted to say it is impossible to be calculated using algebraic methods, but then I figured that it is indeed possible using an alternative argument, so I changed the script. The trigonometric identity, which is the formula for the sum of sines, will be the focus of this video. And we can use algebra or geometry to derive the identity, and you can do the judgement which method is superior. For the algebraic method, the easiest method is to multiply the entire expression by sine theta over 2, then distribute sine theta over 2 to all the terms. Now we can use the product to sum formula in trigonometry. This is quite simplified, but we want to further manipulate it for reasons I will explain later. This is done by considering the sum to product formula, which is basically the reverse of the previous formula. We apply the formula, and then realize that we can pull out the negative sign to the front, so these two negative signs cancel out each other. And finally, realize that we have multiplied by sine theta over 2 to make all these possible, and so we have this formula for the sum of sines. The main reason not to stop after the telescoping series is that the sum of sines formula bears a very strong resemblance with this famous formula derived by Gauss, which makes memorizing the formula easier. That is the algebraic derivation. The geometric proof for this is a little bit tricky, because there needs to be some slight adjustments to the argument depending on the range of theta. But for this video, we will ultimately want a result for the limit representation of the integral. And the angles here are all acute, at most, a right angle. So we only focus on this scenario. To start us off, remember that in the previous video, we have established that these vertical segments are of length sine k pi over 2n, where k ranges from 1 to n. However, from this point on, we will use theta to denote pi over 2n to save space. And so these lengths are sine k theta. What we will do is to move these triangles elsewhere. All we do is just translation and nothing else. If we put a coordinate system, what we want to know is the coordinates of this point, specifically the y-coordinate. The reason why we consider the y-coordinate is that it is simply the sum of signs we are interested in. To get the formula for it, we should come up with another alternative to calculate the y-coordinate of the white dot. This alternative way is to consider d and phi in the diagram then the sum of sines will equal d sine phi. We need to figure out what d and phi are. We would be a little intuitive here because writing down all the regular steps might be daunting and distracting from the main line of reasoning. Firstly, we can see that the colored lines form a part of the circle. Then imagine you are on a train from the origin, initially facing the direction that the red line says then travel along the colored tracks towards the white dot. During the process, we originally go from a direction that measures an angle of theta to the horizontal, ultimately to a direction that is an angle of n theta to the horizontal. In a sense, we can say that the average direction of the train is n plus 1 theta over 2, which should be exactly phi because this white line should be the average direction that the train is going. Now let's say instead of focusing on the direction that you are going, focus on the direction of the center of the circle. This direction would change by n theta throughout the journey, because the direction of the train also changes by n theta. To calculate d using this fact, we first cut the isosceles triangle along its symmetry. 
we will then get this yellow equation. Using a similar argument, replacing the length d with a colored edge, we have a similar equation. By simply dividing the first equation by the second one, we finally obtain d in terms of n and theta. So now that we have d and phi, we can finally substitute it back to this alternative way of obtaining the y coordinate of the white dot, and we get this formula that we have seen before using algebraic derivation. Now that you have seen both derivations of the same formula, you can judge by yourself which of them is superior. However, I would provide some objective points for you to consider. For the algebraic method, of course you need to know the sum to product and product to sum formulae, and that multiplying by sine theta over 2 is a good idea, especially if you don't already know the formula. But of course it is a rather quick process, and just in my opinion, the cancelling of the terms is very satisfying. For the geometric derivation, of course you don't need any advanced knowledge, just simple geometry. But, coming up with the consideration of the y-coordinate of the white dot is not that easy, and it is a rather long process, even if you know what you are doing. So I will leave it up to you to decide which method wins. In any case, now that we have derived this formula, we can put it into good use. Remember that this is still a video in a series doing integrals without integration, and so we are still calculating the integral. Now we can substitute theta to be pi over 2n, and so we finally have this expression as the limit. Then we can split up the limits so that the two limits exist. To tackle the first limit, we can use the substitution u equals pi over 4n, which makes u tend to 0 since n tends to infinity. And so we have this limit, which equals 2. The second limit is much easier, we just need to see that n plus 1 over n tends to 1 when n tends to infinity, and so we have its limit to be sine squared pi over 4. And since sine pi over 4 is 1 over the square root of 2, the integral equals 1. Whether you like the algebraic or the geometric derivation or the sum of projections in the previous video, leave a comment down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Mephomaniac if you enjoyed this video. Bye!